me. So today, as you can tell from the title, we're continuing this Jingle Dress Chronicles series by finally sewing the dress together. <laughs> Quick disclaimer that I'll be going in the beginning of every video. Jingle Dress Dancing is a closed practice only for Native peoples indigenous to the North American continent. If you are non-native, you are welcome to watch these videos for entertainment or for education, but please do not replicate the jingle dress or get into jingle dress dancing as it is a closed practice. Okay, so at this point, I'm not really sure how many instructions in this video are going to be unique to the jingle dress. There might be a few things here and there, but this part is mostly just sewing the dress together like you would any other one except um, if there were certain qualities to your dress that you chose differently from me, then I obviously won't be able to show you how to do them here. Um, an example of what I mean are like puffy sleeves. Um, also, this dress doesn't have cuffs on the sleeves either, but you can see me sew uh, cuffs on sleeves on camera um, in my ribbon skirt or in my ribbon shirt tutorial. Um, so I'll go look for the timestamps and I'll put them right here. But that's about all I have to say right here. Um, so let's switch over to voiceover Chelsea and get rolling. The supplies you need for this video include your dress pieces, your sleeve pieces, your zipper, your sewing machine and thread, an iron, your scissors, pins, measuring tape, your front neck hole depth measurement, and eventually your clothes washing machine. You'll also need a fray blocking method. Some people just fray block using a zigzag stitch on their machine or by sewing two straight stitches, but you can also use pinking shears, liquid fray block, or an interlock machine, otherwise known as a serger. There's also the French seam method. I'll link a video for that in the description if you're interested. Before we sew anything, let's quickly talk about the hem of the dress. If you've already hemmed it in part four, then you can move on to the next step. Otherwise, you have two options for hemming. Option one is hemming the front and the back each separately before sewing the dress together. This is often easier for beginners. The downside is the rough edges at the side seams. Option two is hemming the entire dress at once, which is what I'm going to do. You don't have rough edges on the hem at all, but some beginners find it a little more difficult to work with the circular shape of the fabric. If you choose option one, now is the time to hem. If you choose option two, we'll hem later in the video. Those of you using option one can skip to these timestamps to learn how to hem if you don't know how. All right, so. It really doesn't matter if you take care of the bodice area first or the skirt area first, but here I'm going to get the skirt area out of the way first. Lay your front and back pieces right sides together. Make sure your bias tape rows are matching up. Pin your fabric pieces together. Then sew a half inch seam up both sides, ending at the bottom of the armpit. But be careful not to catch the tabs like me who clearly forgot she was sewing a jingle dress. Press your seams open and then apply your fray blocking method. Now going back to earlier when we talked about matching up the bias tape rows for the side seams, if your rows don't match up, you can either live with that and keep the hem of the dress matched up or you can match the rows and leave the hem of the dress unmatched. If your tape is way off, however, like say an inch or more, I wouldn't suggest moving the pieces that much or your sleeve area is going to end up too far off. Now I'm going to hem the dress. We're going to do a rolled hem. I usually save this step for last, but I don't know, I guess today is different. <laughs> When hemming, I always like to start at one of the side seams. I suggest using your measuring tape here, but if you trust your eyeballs, by all means, go for it. But I'm placing my tape on the fabric and folding a half inch of the edge over the tape. Then I remove the tape and fold the edge up again. After that, I pin and repeat this all around the hem, pinning as far apart as you feel comfortable. 
Starting at the side seam, straight stitch all the way around the hem. Sew near the top of the roll, not the bottom. I like to sew with the rolled side facing up so I can control the rolls, making sure they're neat and not unrolling as I sew. A quick tip is to slightly pull the fabric from the roll, holding it taut. This keeps the roll flat, but try not to pull the fabric too tightly. Once you've sewn all the way around, press the hem flat. Keep in mind that this is technically a top stitch, so the thread will be visible on the outside of the dress. Next, find the neck hole area of the front of the bodice. Starting at the shoulder, measure the depth measurement straight down. Then, move sideways to approximately the center of the neck hole area. Mark that spot. Don't forget to consider the half inch seam allowance if you didn't include it in the measurement yet. Now, fold the front bodice in half, meeting up the inner shoulder points. Draw a curve from the inner shoulder point to the new mark. Keep the bodice folded and cut along that line. Once you unfold your bodice, you should have a deeper and symmetrical neck hole. All right, next, sew the shoulders right sides together with a half inch seam. Stop sewing a half inch away from the inner shoulder. Press the side seams open and apply your fray block method. Now go back to the neck hole. Starting at the middle of the neck hole, separate the outer fabric from the inner lining. Fold each layer a half inch inward and in between them. Pin them together as you go. To make it easier to fold around the curves, cut a slit or two in the allowance. Once you've folded and pinned the entire neck hole, press flat. Then top stitch around the entire hole. If you chose not to line your fabric, you still have a few options. One, do a small rolled hem, rolling a quarter inch. Two, fold your fabric in once and fray block the edge. Or three, you can apply bias tape. Now I want to add the zipper. I've stated before, it's up to you whether you want it in the front or in the back. I'm adding my zipper in the front. I decided that the 9 inch zipper was a little too long, so I'm cutting it down to the size that I want. If you do this, stitch over the teeth a couple times to form a new stop for the zipper. It's not impossible to get the zipper back on the teeth if you accidentally pull it off, but it is a big pain in the butt. Lay the zipper onto the bodice and mark on the fabric where the zipper stop is. Beginning at the neck hole, cut a slit in the middle of the bodice down to that mark. Do not cut the slit as long as your zipper. You want the end of your zipper to be below the end of the slit. Attach the zipper to the slit. If you don't know how to attach zippers, I'll link a video below for you. Apply your fray block method. Now we're in the home stretch. It's time to attach the sleeves. I'm not attaching a lining to the sleeves just to keep them light. You might still want a lining if using white or off-white fabric just to avoid sweat stains from the armpits. Similarly to deciding when to hem the skirt, you can choose whether to hem the sleeves before or after you sew the side seam. If you choose option one, hem your sleeves now. I typically hem them after, but I'm going to hem them now just because child size sleeves are so small it makes them difficult to hem. For each of your sleeves, fold them in half right sides together. Then stitch the side with a half inch seam. Press the seams open and fray block. Next, fold each of your sleeves right side out and your dress inside out. Fold the sleeve in half at its seam then tuck your sleeve into the armhole of the dress. Now the sleeve and the dress should be right sides together. Match the side seam of the sleeve and the side seam of the dress together and begin pinning the sleeve all around the armhole. If you used a bell shape pattern, then match the top middlemost point of the sleeve with the shoulder seam together before pinning the rest of the sleeve to the armhole. Straight stitch around the armhole with a half inch seam. Apply your fray block method. You also want to press the armhole seams flat, but not open. First of all, if you're into sewing and you don't have an ironing ham, I highly suggest one. They're worth every penny. 
but instead of pressing the seams open, press both seams toward the sleeve. All right, so the dress is um, pretty much finished. This is the end result, just about anyway but I have one more thing for you, so don't click off yet. Now that you've finished sewing your dress, it's time to wash it before we put any cones on. And this is mostly to get rid of any um, chalk marks. As you can see, you know, if you followed my directions, then you probably did things similar to me, how I um, uh, used chalk and like fabric marking things too mark on the fabric and you need to wash that off. So you can, you can hand wash it or you can put it in your washer. I'm gonna put mine in my washer. Um, if your washer has an agitator, I would suggest putting it in a mesh washer bag to protect the tabs from being pulled. Um, but you know, that's a, a just in case thing. Mine has an agitator and I've washed my uh, jingle dresses in there before and I've never had a problem but it's up to you whether you want to do that or not um, so when you do use the washer then wash on delicate with cold water and then hang it up to dry I don't ever suggest putting your dress in the dryer especially if um, you used cotton because there's a chance that the material could shrink and then you won't fit your dress anymore um, and then in the future for washing your dress, you know, after you put cones on and you dance a couple powwows, um, I suggest spot cleaning your dress by hand. Um, I've seen a few people say that they don't have issues washing their dresses in the washer with cones on. I say a few people, um, but I, I don't know how they keep their cones from rusting or um, running into any problems by, by getting that metal wet. Um, but I would say if you truly want to use your washing machine, then remove your cones before washing and then reattach them later. Um, but if anyone has any tips on washing your jingle dress um, throughout you know its lifetime, please feel free to share them in the comments. So this next video will be our last. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to attach your combs to your dress. So I will see you in that one. Bye, my people up in.